Hello everyone, my name is Ronnie Godoy and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Oakridge Systems. This is the second part of our Continuity and Curvature series. If you want to take a look at the first part, click the link at the end of the video. So today we're going to take a look at how to further evaluate our surfaces using different display styles as well as optimizing our splines even more. The first thing we want to take a look at is our different types of degrees of curvature, just like we saw in our first video. We have contact, we have tangent, and we have curvature. Contact being where our two entities meet, but there is no smooth transition between our curvature combs. Tangent being where we have our entities meet, and they have the same direction, but the magnitudes are different. And then we have our curvature continuous option where our entities are meeting and the curvature combs have the same magnitude as well as the same direction. And so what does this mean when we talk about creating these components here? Well, if I turn on my zebra stripes, that is going to be a display as if my model was highly reflective in a room full of uh, lights in the ceiling or just reflecting off, off the surfaces. And so if we look at our contact, model here, you'll see that my zebra stripes are not matching as far as their directions is concerned. And so that's going to create a break or an edge here in my model. And if we look at our tangent option, where the, the adjacent surfaces are at, you'll see that the zebra stripes are going to be in the same or pointed in the same direction but the magnitude is obviously different between this surface here and this surfaces on the outside. And then if we look at our curvature continuous surface, you'll see that not only is that gonna give me the smoothest surface, but our zebra stripes have the same direction and they have the same magnitude. We could even analyze this more by turning on our curvature display style, which is going to show me the radius at different locations in my surface. And so this is going to be color coded where black surfaces are going to be surfaces with the least amount of curvature. And then it's going to transition from blue to green to red, where red is the, the, the most amount of curvature on my surfaces. And so you'll see that my contact surface is going to be a, a dark green color where the surfaces aren't really having too much change in the radius as opposed to where my tangent relationship is, you'll see that the middle surface is obviously going to have a uh, bigger radius of curvature as opposed to the adjacent surfaces here. And my curvature continuous surface is going to have a smooth uh, transition, in that light green color there for the curvature. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how to further optimize this curvature continuous option or surface here. If we go ahead and take a look at our spline tools once again, I'm going to go ahead and create a spline between these two points. And one way that I can go ahead and create a smooth transition here is by adding again that equal curvature sketch relationship. That's going to give me not only a smooth transition, but what that's going to do is it's going to give me the curvature comb is going to have the same direction and the transition is going to be where the radius is equal between my two entities there. So that's why we get this smooth transition in our curvature combs. But we can further optimize this by adding additional tools. If I right click on my spline here, I can add what we call a curvature control. That is going to allow me to control the curvature radius at any given point in my spline. So if I go ahead and just place it down at the end of my spline here, I get that Thunderbolt symbol. But what I could do now is by clicking on my spline, that's going to give me an additional option in my spline tools here. I have this raised degree option, which is going to give me an even smoother transition here. SOLIDWORKS is going to use a higher lev level or higher degree of math in order to give me an even smoother transition between my curvature combs which we know is going to ultimately give us a smoother surface. We discussed the style spline in our last video, which we know is going to give us a lot more control between our curvature comb and the transition. 
And so if I go ahead and turn this on and add that curvature sketch relationship there, we know that we could go ahead and move different points in our style spline to give us smooth transitions. Now, when we add that equal curvature sketch relationship, there are some points that are not going to give us or only are limited in how we can uh, move them around and what they're going to do as far as the transition in our curvature comb is concerned. But we can add additional degrees here for our curve to add additional points and ultimately have more control in different areas of our spline. Now the last thing we want to take a look at is what happens when I have a spline that has equal curvature on both ends. What SOLIDWORKS does in a situation like this is it's going to automatically select that raised degree option. And so in situations where you have an equal curvature sketch relationships on both ends, you're going to automatically have that raised degree option selected. Now we see that the transition is smooth here, but you may want to adjust your handles even more to get a smoother transition, depending on what you want. And we already know that standard is not going to give us the best option that we raise degree to give us the smoothest transition. So this completes our second video for our two-part series on continuity and curvature. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our blog for additional tips and tricks. Thank you for watching. See you next time.